There is no way to happiness. Happiness is the way. You're not going to find it in something outside of you. It is, and it's like when you understand this and get this, connecting to intention means something that's very powerful to you. There's an observation that I came across. I'm not sure the exact year, but it was in the early 1900s. His name was Thomas Troward. And he gave a series of lectures on mental science at the Ed Edinburgh in Scotland, called the Edinburgh and Dory Lectures. And one of those observations, one of those quotations was this. I really love this. He said, the law of flotation was not discovered by the contemplation of the sinking of things. Isn't that great? Imagine yourself trying to figure out, you know, what he made an observation that before about the 15th or 16th centuries, um, all of the ships in the world were made out of wood. And why do you think they made ships out of wood for so many centuries? Because when you put wood in water, what happens? It floats, and our conclusion was, the law of flotation must be, you want things to float, make them out of things that float. But now, we have realized that in studying the law of flotation, that it has nothing to do with what the material is made of, it has to do with the amount of water that is being displaced. So now, all the ships of the world are made out of stuff that doesn't float, and yet they float. We're celebrating now, at this time in our history, uh, the flights, uh, the 100 year anniversary of uh, Orville and Wilbur Wright over in uh, Dayton, Ohio. Imagine the law of flight being discovered by someone, by two brothers, contemplating the staying on the ground of things. <laughs> <laughs> so what we want to do is figure out a way uh, to reconnect ourselves to surrounding ourselves with this, um, with this idea that we are already connected to everything that we need for everything in our life. We've just separated ourselves by believing that we're something that we're not. And I came across this observation, and I was writing some notes on what I'm just talking about, on contemplating things. Listen to these words. We know that by the very nature of the creative process, which is what intention is about, learning to create the life that you want, the world that you want, the people that you want, the excitement that you want, the health that you want, everything. We know that by the very nature of the creative process, that we are one with this originating spirit. And therefore, we are also one with all of its principles. Whatever this is like, whatever it sounds like, whatever it thinks like, whatever it looks like, we are one with it. And consequently, we are one with its infinite personality. We are not here as human beings having spiritual experiences. We are all spiritual beings having human experiences, all of us. We are all infinite. And therefore, our contemplation of this, this source, as the power which we want, gives us the ability to use that power. And the way that we use this process is to contemplate ourselves as surrounded by the conditions which we want to produce. Keep that in mind, underline that. Surround yourself internally with the conditions, contemplate them, which you want to produce. What is it you want to produce in your life? What do you intend to create for yourself? It's not your ego that's gonna do it. It's your free will to reconnect to this, which is the source of everything. If you call my cell phone, Pick up the phone, I don't, I'm not gonna give that number, but uh, <laughs> if you were to call this number, this is what you would get as a message from me. Hi, this is Wayne Dyer that you've reached, and I want to feel good. If your call is designed to do anything other than that, <laughs> you have reached the wrong number. But feeling good is perhaps the most important thing that I can talk to you about here in cleaning up this link. If you open up the Torah, this ancient spiritual text, the Old Testament, and go to the very opening lines, 
Genesis 1.1, it says, what? In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Pretty simple. God is infinite. Out of this source came all the material worlds. And then if you read down 31 lines later, it says, and all that God created was good. So good and God are synonymous, aren't they? Good and God, just an O, just one extra O. So that when you say, I want to feel good, as you'll see as this program unfolds, you're really saying, in a way, I want to feel God. I want to feel whatever this beautiful source of all, this divine mind, this source of all things, I want to feel what it feels. Now you might say to yourself, yeah, it's easy to say I want to feel good, but uh, how can I feel good when so much around me is bad? How can I feel good if my sister-in-law is, has cancer? And how can I feel good if I know that over on the other side of this planet there are people who are starving to death? And how can I feel good if there are people who are poor and I have money and there are people who are starving and how can I feel good when my children act in the way that they act? Or how can I feel good? And I suggest to you that when you say I want to feel good, what you're saying is I want to feel God. I want to feel this. I want to connect here. And I want to offer this to you as a very important and powerful piece of advice that came to me years ago. You cannot get sick enough to heal one person on this planet. And you cannot get poor enough to make one person wealthy on this planet. And you cannot get confused enough to unconfuse one person on this planet. No amount of your feeling bad, when you say feeling bad, what you do is you lose your connection to source. And when you lose your connection to source, what happens is you create something called resistance. I can't do this. It's not possible. I, I don't deserve it. This is just not something that I can do. I, and when you create this kind of resistance, you have emotions. And these emotions become sadness, fear, worry, anxiety. And what I'd like to offer you is a way for you to use these emotions that you are experiencing at any time in your life and use them as a system, as a, as a, as a barometer, as a guidance system to say to yourself, what kinds of thoughts am I having that are keeping me from being in rapport with this field of intention? And at any moment that you're not feeling good, you are attracting exactly the opposite of what it is that you would like to attract into your life. You are using this as a way to keep yourself from feeling God or feeling good. If you are listening to the news, and the news is filled with all of the reasons why you should be depressed, and it's not an accident that then they are sponsored by all of the reasons why you should take these uh, narcotics or these pills or whatever it is in order to get over. So here's some depression and wait a minute, we'll be right back. Here's a way out of it, okay? <laughs> I saw a commercial the other day. I don't even know what it was for. Some guy gets up in the morning and he's going out to get clams. And he's going out clamming in the morning and he's, uh, and he, he's successful at getting the clams. He walks off and he's got his clams. And I think, and then they say, call your doctor to see if <laughs> you need some of this clam-finding miracle drug. <laughs> There's a drug out there that'll help you find clams if this happens to be one of your problems, all right? And there's, there's something out there, and now we're being told to call our doctors. The, do I need the orange pill, the green pill, the purple pill? Do I need this one? I saw so-and-so reading it, and she was skating on the ice, and I want to skate on the ice. And, then, and, it, and it's like, it's an endless progression of this. 